Right. Uh, greetings, greetings, fellow Greek tens. It's Mr. Sajari here. Welcome to Back to Basics. What we are doing now, basically, we are looking at our analytical geometry and we are trying to, you know, understand some of the equations that may be involved when it comes to this particular question, right? So I think we are doing this through the past paper of November 2017, right? To see in terms of what is it that we can do in order to understand this particular topic, right? Now, firstly, uh, now if you can look at this particular diagram, they are saying now we are given your P, you are given your Q and your R and your S. We are not sure of these coordinates. That's why they have labeled them T and K, which are the vertices of your quadrilateral. Now, the first question require us to calculate what is going to be the length of PQ. So we are going to say, look, our PQ it is given by a square root of uh, x2 subtract x1 squared plus y2 subtract y1 squared. Remember, this is the distance formula. And then now, uh, when you want to calculate the length, then what is going to be your x2? So which means this is going to be same as, let's say you consider this other one. Uh, let's say you consider your p to be your 2, right? So which means this is same as your 7 subtract 6. 7 subtract 6 squared. This is uh, same as plus. This is same as your 4 subtract 6. Then all of this is squared, right? That's good. And then what else then now are you then going to have from here? Then when you say 7 subtract 6, what is it that you're having? This is same as 1 squared. Plus when you say 4 subtract that, this is going to be same as negative 2 squared and then the answer that you're going to get here same as what uh one and four which is same as root five how to get so basically your distance for p and q it is going to be your root five how to get now after that let's look at the second question they say if t they say if t is the midpoint of q uh of what of qs so basically they are saying uh if let's say you are drawing another line here Let's say you are drawing a line here, right? Let me just draw this line of mine very nice here, right? If, let's say, you are drawing a, a diagonal line that intersects here, uh, they are saying uh, your T is going to be the midpoint of this particular line. Let's say the T is the midpoint of this particular line, and you are given that T is 7 over what? 7 over 2 and 7 over 2. Now, they want you to calculate that now the the what the coordinates of these particular s now what is it that you're going to do now i want you to take note of something let's say if you're having a straight line like this uh it's a point here it's a point here it's a point here as long as you are given that these two uh sides are going to be equal right uh, which means as long as they are telling you that this is your midpoint, you can still use your midpoint formula, right? But you're going to split this particular midpoint formula now. How are you going to do it? You are going to say, for an example, you are going to say, look, this, remember here, it's your T. So you're going to say your X of your T is equals to your X of what? Let, let me just use the alphabet for now. The X of your Q plus your X of your S uh, over what? Over 2. And then now, what is it that you're going to do now? What was the X of the T? Remember now you have uh, the midpoint, which means where there is midpoint, you are going to substitute 7 over 2, which is equals to what is the X of your Q? This is uh, 6 plus X of what? X of your S uh, over what? This is over 2. And when we cross multiply here, what is it that you're going to do from here? Uh, look, this is same as 7 over 2 multiplied by 2, which is same as what? This is same, same as 7 is equals to 6 uh, plus x uh, of what? Of s, which means your x of s is simply going to be same as what? Y, right? The x of your s. The same thing here. Now, we are going to do the same thing as your y. You're going to say y of t is same as y of my q uh, plus by y of my s. Uh, then divide by 2. Then what is going to be the t? The t is 7 over 2, which is equal to what is the y of q? This is 6. Uh, then plus, this is y of s and also the 2. When you multiply here, can you see that? Uh, and when you cross multiply here, what is it that you're going to get? This is still the same thing. This is same as your 7. When you say 7 over 2 multiply by 2, then is equal to 6 plus y of your s. Then when you transpose this 
uh, six this side you y of s you are also going to get what you are also going to get one which means basically your coordinate of s is same as one is to one Okay, get so basically that is going to be the understanding of our coordinate s hopefully this makes sense to you now right now let's try and move swiftly along to our next question right uh, let's see in terms of what else then now are you given now that we already know that our s is same as 1 is 2 1, right so we are saying this coordinate s here uh it's what it's same as 1 is 2 1 what else now can we do the next question require us to what they say if s luckily they are already telling us something that we've already calculated they say show that pq or rather pr look at me pr they want you to show that uh, PR is the same as what as your QS. Basically, they want us to prove that these particular diagonals are going to be the same, right? So now, and how can we do that, right? So they say show that P uh, PR is equal to your QS. So now, what is the best thing that you can do now from here? You can literally just start by calculating what is going to be your length of your PR, right? So you're going to say that dis my distance of my PR, uh, it is going to be same as what? My PR is going to be same as, remember this is uh, same as X, uh, what? X1 plus X, or rather X2 subtract X1. Look at me, I'm thinking of the midpoint formula now. X2 subtract X1 squared plus, this is Y2 subtract Y1 all squared. Now what is going to be this? Uh, now this is your X2. What is going to be your x2 here? Let's say you are using 7 subtract 0 squared plus. Remember, I'm taking this coordinate and this coordinate, right? 7 subtract 0 and this is same as what? Same as 4 subtract 3. What is this going to be? Now, can you see that this is same as 7? This is same as 7 squared, which is 49. And then 4 subtract 3 is 1. 1 squared is same as 1, which means here you are going to have root of 50. And what is root of 50? Root of 50 is same as root 5 and 2. Uh, can you see that, right? And you can also, now they say, if the coordinate of S show that PR and QS. So now we can just also do our QS and say, our QS, it is going to be given by what? You use the same distance formula. Now let's just go straight to it and substitute. Can you see that this is same as, let me just write the formula first x2 subtract x1 squared plus this is y2 subtract y1 all squared this is same as what and now the answer that you are going to find here can you see that this is same as your one subtract uh let's say we use one subtract what subtract five or six squared plus the same thing here it's same as one subtract six squared then can you see that this is same as what this is same as 5 and 5, which is same as 25 plus 25, right? 5 squared is 5, is 25 and 25. This is same as root 50, and root 50 is same as what? 5 root 2. How to get? So now, can you see that these two things are equal? Then, therefore, you can provide conclusion that your PQ uh, is what? Your PQ uh, is equal to your QS because both are equal to 5 root 2. Now, to get. now, hopefully this makes sense to you now. Let's just, uh, you know, make up our space to look at now our 3.4 to see in terms of what is it that is required of us in question 3.4. Now, looking at 3.4, they want us to show that your, your, what, your QR, they want us to show that your QR, uh, this is Q, this is R, QR, it is what, it is perpendicular to what, to our rs so basically they want us to show that this angle here it is 90 degrees now how can we go about in calculating that for an example you can start by calculating what is going to be the current of your qr right remember you already have all these co coordinates so this is y2 subtract y1 over x2 subtract x1 now what is going to be this you can use uh for q and r you can use six uh subtract what six subtract three over and uh, this is same as six subtract zero which is going to be same as what? 1 over 2. Can you see that, right? And now, you can also calculate what is going to be the gradient of your RS, the gradient of your RS. Now, to calculate what is going to be uh, the gradient of your RS. Now, 
Uh, your gradient of your RS is going to be same as what? Uh, this is your R and this is your S. Can you see that this is same as what? You can use this as uh, three separate one over this other one is going to be same as what? It's three separate one. And then after three separate one, it's zero separate one. And then the answer that you are going to have here, three separate one. And also your zero separate one, the gradient that you are going to find here, same as two over negative one, which is same as negative two, right? And then now to prove perpendicular, you are just going to multiply the uh, these gradient. You are going to say the gradient of PQ multiplied by the gradient of what? Of RS must give me negative one. If these uh, lines are what are perpendicular, right? So which means now what is it that you're going to do? Uh, you are going to say, uh, now, let's see, you are going to say this is same as what? This is same as 1 over 2 multiplied by negative 2. And the answer that you're getting is same as negative 1. All together. So, therefore, you can uh, now conclude that uh, my QR is perpendicular to what? To RS. What is going to be the reason? Because the gradient of P cubed multiplied by the gradient of RS is equal to negative 1. All together. So basically, that is going to be the conclusion of you when uh, when it comes to this particular question. Okay, now let's uh, let's look at the last question now. It's in terms of what is entailed in that particular question, right? Let's just make up our space here, right? Uh, let's see in terms of what else can we do now from here. Uh, now, the last question require us to calculate what is going to be the size what is going to be the size of what? RSQ. Uh, RSQ. So basically now here, let's just erase some of the things here, right? So they are saying, let's say you are you are you have plotted this particular R diagram, right? They want you to calculate what is going to be your RSQ. So basically they want you to find out this angle here, right? And let's say we say this particular angle of ours here is going to be your theta. Or rather, oh, before that. Now, in 3.5, they say, hence, uh, what uh, type of special quadrilateral is this? Remember, now we've already calculated and we've showed that this is 90, which means this is going to be 90. This is 90. This is 90. So, the, uh, the type of a quadrilateral that you can say this is going to be a rectangle, right? This is going to be a rectangle. Why is it a rectangle? Uh, opposite, what? Opposite uh, sides are equal. Uh, opposite sides equal, right? Yes, they are equal, and also, uh, and also what? Uh, and also the interior angles. Uh, what the interior? Interior angles are equals to what equals to ninety degrees. So basically, that's going to be the reason we are saying this is a rectangle, right? Now to calculate for this one, it is you know almost very uh, much straightforward because. You are going to do this. Let me say, let's say I redraw this particular triangle for you here so that you can see what is required of you in this, right? Let me just draw this. Hopefully you can see this particular shape of mine. So can you see that this is same as your R, this is your S, this is your what? this is your Q. Now, uh, to begin with, uh, you know that, for example, we know that your P, uh, your QP, it was root five. And we know that your QP is same as your what? Your RS because this is a rectangle, which means this is going to be a root 5, right? The angle of theta that you are looking for is this here. And we know that our QR, remember we've already calculated that the angle of QR, it was what? Uh, it was 5 root 2, right? The length of QR. Altogether, it was 5 root 2. Remember, we did that when we were calculating for PR in that, right? So, which means now, what is it that you can do to calculate for this particular angle? So, you can just calculate this using what? Remember, here you have the angle, uh, you have the opposite side, uh, or rather, you also have the one, the adjacent side. So, what is it that you can do here? Uh, look at me. This was basically, uh, now, the line that we're having, it was the diagonal, not the QR, but rather, this was 5 root. This was uh, 5 root 2, the diagonal is 5 root 2, right? So, which means now you must, you're going to change now the trigonometrical ratio that you're going to use here. So, what you're going to use here, you're going to use your, 
your what your uh your cost for an example because you have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side right so you're going to say your cost of theta uh, it is going to be said as what the adjacent side it's r s uh it's it's car which means it's adjacent over uh your what your q s and then what is going to be this this is going to be uh, your cos of theta, which is going to be the same as Rs. Your Rs here, it's root 5. Uh, your, your what? Your Qs is going to be the same as what? It is going to be the same as 5 root 2, which means now your theta, you are going to do the what? Shift cos of, uh, this is the same as root 5 over uh, 5 root 2. And then you are going to find out what is going to be the solution. The angle that you're going to find here, this is same as 71,57 degrees, right? So therefore, you can just conclude that our RSQ, RSQ, it's same as what? 71,57 degrees altogether. So basically, this is how you go about when you are answering these types of questions, right? Hopefully, these make sense to you now. And you're in a position to answer all these some of the questions of analytical geometry that they may come. Thank you very much.